Why not? Um, so my name is Mike Logan, and um, I'm a chief marketing officer at the company in Matraska, and we do several different things. So, uh, first of all, yeah, is we use social media to do social marketing for different organizations. Uh, we work with a lot of organizations to help them create social media policies uh, inside their organizations, pretty much how to use them, this new technology for their recruiting, uh, for PR, for marketing, uh, and for efficiency inside their organization itself. But additionally, we do a lot of uh, training, teaching, workshops, seminars for organization preparations, and speak at some events uh, on the topics of uh, social media job search, recruitment, and uh, marketing, that is like social marketing. Uh, we did a number of events for colleges and universities uh, in the United States uh, on similar topics to help students find jobs and internships. So far, we have a very positive record of people actually being able to get interviews and uh, um, some kind of interaction with recruiters based on what we teach. Uh, additionally, we focus uh, on the recruiting side of the social media, and I will try to give a couple of advices on, on what companies need to do in order to become more human and hire better job seekers. So first of all, I said there are quite sessions going on, including the steward game. Uh, why did you decide to come here? Do you have any expectations? Um, what are you expected to learn? Any expectations? Yeah. I want a good understanding of what the different information companies push out in order to get the feedback, the good possible and uh, more importantly, is there another way we can go about doing it with this more direct? You know? So, more direct approach to fire and uh, candidates. Exactly. Okay. And Dallas? I do a different kind of recruiting. Mine is for programs, so people coming in, it's not for job opportunities. Um, so, I guess I'm kind of wondering how to also tailor my social media, social, mar social marketing um, to that demographic as well. Okay. So, we'll talk about those. Obviously, there is a lot of discussion about social media. I'm not going to tell you my perspective. I just find this book quite funny and interesting that um, you find social media kind of ironic that everybody thinks they know what it is. But in reality, it's very hard to measure, it's very hard to understand it, and it's very hard to see success in it. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, you know, there are tons of, because there are a lot of people, and the notion is very hard to calculate social media, it's very hard to calculate your ROI. And I agree with that. On the other hand, I find myself in meetings with different executives almost every day, and I have to sell them on the notion that they need to invest 10, 15, 20 thousand dollars in social media. And the question is, well, we want to see some results, we want to see some some, some, some tangible results. So just a couple of numbers, I'm not gonna bore you to death with the statistics on social media. I'm sure you already know this. So uh, by the way. You probably realized by now that I have an accent. I was not actually born in the United States, I was born in Ukraine. I hope I'm clear in wherever I present, but I'm um, just letting you know I need to remind myself. So, a couple of statistics and uh, social media now is more popular than uh, emails, and uh, I've heard that social media now is more popular than pornography. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or bad thing, just the way it is. So what about social media recruitment? Let's look at some statistics from the market. And um, companies say that 7% uh, always use social media to check credentials of their candidates. 11% of companies do it frequently, and uh, this is very interesting, that over 90% of companies use Google to check the credentials of their candidates to find the information about, uh, about them. So the question is to job seekers is obviously, when you search for a cell phone line, what type of information do you find? And if it's good information, well, that's nice, but if that information will not help me hire you, then it's not good enough. So what are the saying? Some statistics again. According to the national story, over 85% of participating recruiters indicated that applicants do not understand what the recruiters want. I say, I say In terms of marketing, if you're a company and you have clients and you survey your clients and the 85% of them say you don't understand what they want, it's a challenge for your organization. So the same is job search. What does that mean? So what do recruiters mean? 
uh, when they say they are not satisfied with what uh, job seekers do online. Recruiters do not want to sort kind of surprise me. When you post uh, your job on Career Builder on Monster, you get three, four hundred um, applicants. And that is not a fact. That goes is how do you improve your recruitment processes? If uh, posting uh, a job on the Career Builder is so ineffective, it only gives you more headache and it only gives you more work, then it's not effective. Recruiters want to see creativity, not put for it in resumes. Resume is one page. You cannot show your personality in your resume, therefore, it doesn't work very well. Later, I will show you statistics that said that companies, before they interview you, they want to see some kind of personality. They want to see 360 degrees of you. That's why you need to go beyond your resume. The same goes with the company. If you want to, if the company wants to find the best talent, they need to show 360 degrees of that, not just a blip of the type of uh, job they have available. Recruits like networking as it makes their job easier. You have to network with candidates. Because those that are easily available, chances are you do not want them. You want applicants that are hard to find, those are considered the passive candidates. Your rules like to see how your experience is aligned with the needs of the employer, and your group becomes a social process. So recruiters state and job seekers say that the hiring process is very complicated and time consuming. Companies that stand out in the crowd attract job seekers that stand out in the crowd and job and vice versa. Recruits to social media. Uh, there was a session before on uh, job search and networking. They covered uh, other statistics. I think this is also very relevant. 77% say it improved their ability to connect the best job candidates. 44% say it improved their ability to apply. And 36% say it reduced their time to hire. Those last two are a little bit of numbers. And if you are trying to recruit people, this is what you need to look at that it makes your job easier, it makes it faster, and it makes it cheaper. So this is your formula of success, right? Cost per application needs to go down with social media, cost per hire needs to go down with social media, quality of applicant needs to go up, and quality of hire needs to go up. Does this make sense so far? Mm -hmm. Alright. So we created, yes, go ahead. Since most companies aren't doing this, is there a uh, opening in the marketplace for someone to start like a headhunter business using Facebook to help companies find great talent? Headhunter, I would say no. But okay. What well, do you mean by headhunter? Okay, maybe that's the wrong term. Is there possibly a niche that's not out there where you someone could start a company using this type of model to find businesses talent? Well, certainly, and what we do when we work with different organizations, we, do, we are not headhunters per se, but yeah. we help organizations set up a structure. Yeah. So other employees or potential employees uh, want to interact with a company and they want to work with them. So we make the online environment, online HR brand, personal. Mm -hmm. And certainly there is a huge market for that. Yes? I don't know what other industries are like, but uh, in the programming industry, we have, there's a lot of people that just are recruiters and so they'll you know look at job listings for all kinds of different companies and then they'll try to find the right people for those jobs and then when they find the right people they'll go to the companies and say hey I got just the guy for you uh pay me and I'll tell you who it is and they'll tell you okay I got the right opportunity for you pay me and I'll tell you or tell you where it is and so it's kind of like that like a lot of third party recruiting goes on uh, and they do kind of sneak tests and tactics like that. But a lot of the businesses and programming too, uh, they're all for free, uh, which is usually a little more uh, reliable um, to do a lot of this. So programming kind of like a forward thinking. Well, and here's why it's hard to outsource recruitment inside the company to just another person or to another company. Because the company needs to stand up and we will demonstrate a couple of HR sites that are more prominent that use social media. And those sites, what they do, they do employee outsourcing. What they do, they allow employees inside the organization to market themselves. But instead of marketing a product, instead of marketing a service, you market your talent. You market uh, the conditions that the employees work in. And you make, it, uh, you make this information widely available so when somebody decides, okay, I want to work for this company or for that company, instead of just seeing that job information, they go to the company, they see videos from different people who work at that company, they see different blogs that actually share information and give you a better perspective what the company does. This is 
more true to different nonprofit organizations and organizations that work with different events. Because what you want to do instead of having one person, pretty much an HR person, uh, marketing the company, creating an ad, you want some kind of social interaction where people inside your organization create a social presence for your brand, HR brand, if you will. Um, well, comment. Um, one company I think that does really great at recruiting extremely good talent is um, Google, for example. Um, I don't know if you know, but a couple years back they had one of their ad campaigns. So it was a long mathematical formula on the billboard. They needed really great, talented mathematical algorithm where put a mathematical algorithm on the billboard and it said dot com at the end. We sold that to another puzzle. We sold that to another puzzle and another puzzle and another puzzle. There was like seven B. And it got to the area and it said, the platform people, the platform job people click here, and they had 10 people go apply. But if you there's 10 people that apply for that job, you know, going through that process was an extremely, you know, rigorous task. But they also, yeah, I think somewhere in the range of like 6,000 applicants a month or something more than that. And they do it through the brand of Google. Well, right, but because brand of Google is not just about their product, it's yeah. not about their page Google when you search for it. It's about when you think about Google, you think, okay, it's a great company, it's a great concept, people love working there. There is information, that information is available. What happens to small companies, small companies do not have that uh, admirable brand, admirable at Chabra. So they don't really know how to develop it, and it takes a lot of money to develop admirable each other brand. So they say, okay, screw it. We'll just post an announcement somewhere, on the right. website it's free, and then uh, people will respond. And of course, everybody will respond. Because people say, okay, it's a job, I need a job, I will, I will apply for it. Or nobody applies. Right. Because they don't think because it's, it's not that because it's not a worthwhile job. Right. You know, there was a couple of hours ago, there was a session uh, about marketers, such uh, as some yeah, yeah, yeah. The same applies to job seekers. A lot of them are put in the same position. I do not want to call them a difference, but what happens is instead of trying to find a company they really want to work for, what they do, okay, you know, I'm upset, I don't really have any other options, so I will take hundreds of resumes, I will spam everyone who cares, and then I hope for that my ads will go up. And their probability of success only goes down with that. So we developed this model of connecting job secrets and recruiters and uh, help organizations and people establish their brand and hopefully achieve what they're trying to achieve, get the right person for the right job. So we call it experience design because you're really trying to design your recruitment experience, your hiring experience. So the first is establishing your personal brand, or establishing an HR brand. When somebody searches for you, what type of information will they be able to find? For example, if you're looking for the job in marketing sector, and you're looking for the job in marketing sector, you send in the resume, right? Your resume has the same power words. I improve, I increase, I deliver. Your resume has uh, education, probably undergraduate, undergraduate degree. Degree. undergraduate, undergraduate degree. Uh, you probably have different jobs, but more or less, you still have the same information on your resume. I take away the jobs, titles, and I would say it would be very hard for me to differentiate you. So I, well, my next step is to go online to search you, right? What type of information do I find? Good information, positive information, you make it on the ditch, but what? Both, okay. No, 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 um, I think right now you probably just result in just work on them. That's pretty much it. Good. And then that's about, I mean, if you go down, I'm sure you find on Facebook and people commenting on Twitter or something like that. What about you? What do I find? Um, actually, you'll find a lot. I'm actually a fan hunter. Okay. Um, the one thing that I was going to mention, a lot of people, too, when they send out resumes, and I see this happening with clients of mine out there, where people try to be, again, using technology these days in terms of, okay, I'll send you my resume, here's, go to this link to this website, and you'll find my resume. But the problem with that becomes, the, your potential employer can't actually put your resume into their applicant tracking system. So when there actually becomes a position open, you're not even on their radar screen anymore. You may have had a person visit your website to take a look at your resume, mm -hmm. but again, you're never in their system. 
times. Right. And this is happening more and more, and I don't think people realize what they're doing. So what would be your advice? To, if you're sending in a resume, to send it in MS Word format to a company. Certainly. And I'm not saying that, let's say, on my blog or on my social media resume, and we'll talk about that, is uh, something that you need to do instead of your regular resume. Your regular resume certainly plays out. But even if you send out your resume, perhaps there can be text link to your social media resume, to your right. blog, to your Twitter account, to your LinkedIn page that gives you a 360 degrees of who you are. The problem additionally is that if you are not uh, being very focused in your job search and if you're sending out information to everyone, you cannot have very good personal brand. Because uh, you're pretty much saying that it has to apply to the hundreds of jobs that you are applying for. And it's very hard to do. So let's say you establish a personal brand somehow. The next step is conducting market research. The same goes for companies and for employees. You have to understand what the company wants, and the company needs to understand what type of people that they want to hire, what do they actually want. In terms of benefits, in terms of perks, in terms of office space, whatever it is. After the market research, you have to focus on people search. You have to actually find those people actually, either recruiters or actual job seekers. Those are the people that you decide to interact with. Then you build a networking map. Again, this has been said before, various sessions, uh, you cannot, uh, just like you do not have the time or the resources to use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, MySpace, all that design. What you need to do is understand the people that you are trying to find, where are they? Just as other probably on LinkedIn, or maybe they're on Facebook. If you're uh, trying to recruit people for different events, perhaps you need to focus more on Facebook, more on social sites, uh, uh, then on business social sites like LinkedIn. Then you establish uh, different connections. You establish connections, you build them. This is the part of networking. You engage with them in some kind of conversations. Again, you are not just marketing to them the positions available. You engage in the conversation, basic premises of social media. And then hopefully you pass the interview. I'm not going to cover passing the interview part because I'm not a recruiter. So I do not do a lot of it. Um, I mean, I still do some basic presentations on this topic. But uh, I'll just give a couple of tips on how social media can help you understand what actually the company or the recruiter will want in the interview process. So especially for some brand, um, the first session there was uh, a slide and they talked about be like and I thought, you know, it's simple enough, but it's also so powerful. Your resume will not help you be likable that much. Again, it's just one page, and there is no room to become likable. So your brand, whether you're a company, whether you're a nonprofit organization or a person, you have to be likable. Google is likable. You want to work there. So HR brand is personal. Again, you know, there is an HP commercial computers are personal again, so we played with it and we said a HR brand has to become personal again. Employee generated content. You go to your employees and you ask them, do you like working here? Hopefully they say yes, you do. So you come to them, okay, would you like to maybe have a guest post on our blog where you talk about uh, your experience working for our company? Would you like to upload videos? Would you like to upload audio? Would you like to share content and information that shows our organization in a different line? Use the RSS to distribute this content. So this content is available online, not just on your website. Have real FAQ sessions where employees ask, ask you questions and you give them real answers. Now, a lot of companies do active tweet feeds. And what it is that people can send via Twitter different questions about what type of jobs they're looking for, what type of positions are available, uh, what type of salary requirements they have, and they actually post all this information on their site. Relationship marketing. Your employees are now put in a position where they get to network with potential uh, job seekers. They do the networking process for you, and then they say, okay, I found this person. He's very active in what he does, uh, in what she does. And I like my HR department to meet that person because I think they will be very good if they join our organization, that particular department. And again, it's company-wide network, it's company-wide initiative. 
So the shift of social media marketing or social marketing is that there is not just one um, one person inside the organization that just posts, puts ads. You engage in the conversation. The same is a recruitment. It's now not just one person in your HR department, but it's rather the whole company that engages in conversation and networks with people who will be potentially good fits for your company. Employees as marketers, employees sourcing them, employees as becoming recruiters, and recruiters become the networkers. And again, it's a design of your storytelling. The idea is that your organization now has a story to tell. Job posting is not a story. It's pretty much an ad for the job. What you need is you need to create some kind of story, a story that, that what the organization represents. That's why I mentioned that it's very hard for an organization who wants to do it just to outsource this type of work to an, an recruiter. Because the, the person does not know the company brand, they're not able to promote it. The, the only things they can do is find applicants. They can do the market research and uh, people search, but they cannot do the storytelling for the organization. So here is one of the best examples that we were able to find that was shared, not sure of health care. And this is their recruitment blog, recruitment website. So they have different videos by their employees. They have uh, job announcements. Uh, you can actually subscribe to their feeds. Uh, uh, there is web presence, the ways to contact them. There is URL, there will be LinkedIn page, and the other ways to contact the organization. Images that are taken not just by the people that work for the organization, but for that, but uh, by their patients. So what happens? Patients come to the hospital. They take images somehow. They being treated, and uh, since the images uh, have a positive brand associated with them, company uses that they use a of content to promote the great culture inside the organization. And so there's a description of perks and benefits uh, and types of locations. Other organizations also share uh, music here, but other organizations share different events. Yeah. So how do they drive people to this page? You said just the employees telling people or well every company has some kind of a every medium-sized large company has usually some kind of HR website, right? Where you announce different jobs. So the way to market, obviously, you, know, you work on marketing, you work on SEO, you work on uh, social marketing, where your organization starts to announce all this new stuff that you're being, being that you're adding on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and pretty much just like you promote any website or any product, you promote this. This becomes your marketing product. And now you just need to take it there to people and you need to promote it. Did that answer your question? Okay, so you said social media and what were the other avenues again? Well, one is social media, and that's the one is just uh, with traditional online advertising. Uh, one of the popular that we see is uh, work on SEO. When somebody searches for healthcare jobs, uh, let's say Pittsburgh, your site will come up or you actually do paid advertising. Paperclip. Right. But what happens if somebody searches for jobs and you do and you see paperclip advertisements? Yeah. Most of them are career builder and monster. Yeah. And people are not very tolerant of that because right. they don't like them. Yeah. So if they will be able to see the number one ad actually by the actual company that has this innovative web presence, mm -hmm. just so that say, okay, this this is what they like. And this content is innovative in a way that if the job seeker doesn't want to apply for a job there, but they still like it, they will share it. Okay. Yeah. An example of that is um, every job was an ad has been through one of my friends. Mm -hmm. Like um, the last one I had was um, my friend Jonathan called and says, hey, I think you should check out this company. looking for you know somebody who I think has the same skill set you want to do. Check out their website. It's like, you know, um, www.companyname.com slash HR. I went online, I had a survey up about the company, and I was like, Matt, I don't know if it's the right fit for me. I didn't apply for it. But it's, I think that's, I mean, every job I've ever gotten that I've actually truly loved has always been by like a referral through a friend or somebody who works there currently and there's a need at the company. Or, I mean, and that's the same thing that goes for me. Every really great person that I've brought into a company has always been, hey, I know somebody that does exactly what you're looking for. Check him out and do him a lot. It's exactly what you said, the passive, the passive agreement. But, I mean, if you push your customers, you push your, you know, your recruiters, uh, people you're trying to recruit to your site here, I mean, that's where I get all my information from. Yeah. 
yeah. Right. Well, pretty much uh, the company when it has a product, right, and they want to find different customers, they will be very active promoting that product. And today, uh, hopefully, they'll be very active using social media to promote that product. Unfortunately, a lot of organizations do not treat their HR departments like your product. Yes. What happens is that your HR department is your product. You want the best help, you have to market your HR department, you have to market your organization, as it is a great place to work. And so just like you to promote your product, maybe with a blog, with a social website, with social networks, using Twitter, whatever it is, I'm not going to cover all of that. You need to promote your HR site just like that. Well, and it's an interesting thing because I, I too, sort of, I'm an intermediary. I work between people looking for jobs and people who have jobs. And there's a shift. It, it used to be, I need a job. And you go and you get a job. You're a waiter, you're a waitress, you work at the mall, you do something if you need a job. It seems today people need jobs, but they're really going to be very picky about where they want to work. And their perception of a company is, I'm thinking in particular, there's some there's a there's a great company who is looking for people, they are desperate for people. They can get no one to work there. I can't I can't get any kid who needs a buck to buy a hamburger every day to go work there. They have nothing like this. There's no the only thing they have is the perception of I'm gonna end up working in a store. And they don't want to work in a store. But this store offers benefits to part-timers. Even at 15 hours a week, they have great, you know, it's an international company, there's lots of promotability, it's, it's a great company to market, but there's nowhere that they can go to see stuff like this that says, this is such a fabulous company. Well, I mean, I mean well, if you want, um, because I can tell you that, you know, I graduated from the top, so the top of my class, and I have a lot of job offers on the table, and I'm really quick when it comes to jobs. I, I will admit it, because I have a great degree. Because employers have the right to be picky on who they hire, I should have the right to be picky as far as who I work for. And if I feel that I interview with the company or talk to the company, find out the company doesn't have what I want to have, it's great that they offer me benefits, it's great they offer high pay, I will sacrifice high pay to enjoy my job every day. I don't want to be. I want to be able to enjoy my work and do what I love to do more than anything else in the world. That's what I want. And if the company I feel offers that, if I can figure that out, then I'll want to work there. But until that happens, like I've offered companies a lot of money that I've left. I've left the company, I've left the company making six figures a year and walked out the door at age 21 with no other job on market. And I walked out the door because I said I don't work here anymore. See, that's a paradigm shift about working and work ethic, I think. Yeah, like my dad really worked, did, my dad, you know, right? I mean, it speaks to exactly what you're talking about. This is a health organization. You know, healthcare workers make tons of money and have the most inglorious job. But this is how they want, I mean, they've got to do this kind of stuff to get people to come and work sure. there. And uh, again, I think the problem is, especially today because of the economy, what happens is that there seems like there's not a lot of jobs, and the companies also become very picky, but the uh, job, job applicants, right, job applicants, they, uh, those uh, that are not doing it right, and those perhaps out of necessity, perhaps out of desperation, what they do is just spend everyone this resume. And it becomes very hard for recruiter to find that one, perhaps out of 30, that actually has the best. And the same is company. It's very hard when you get so many resumes for every position and only half of them. And well, that was especially in this market because a lot of the HR departments have been pared down and saved money. Right. Mm -hmm. So now they're receiving 10 times the amount of resumes that they were a year ago, and they're doing it with a third of the staff. Sure. I was um, a regional manager of the Gig Squad at Best Buy, and I can tell you the average Gig Squad employee cost us eighty-six thousand dollars to recruit, hire, and train for ninety days. So after ninety days, an employee that makes about fifteen dollars an hour costs us eighty-six thousand dollars to hire, and the average turnover rate of those employees is thirty percent. So that means thirty percent of people we hire were all fit, and that is. Enormous figures when you talk about that. If this website might cost us, you know, let's say a million dollars a year. You know how many employees we hire a year? You know, we, we hire 1,500 employees in, in my district, let alone. And out of those 30% of the cost, 300 employees gone, about $86,000 each. Well, and the future of this site, I um, have to give credit to another company, but that site was as a custom name, but it's made out of capital. And it's a good, it's good design. Right. That's right. Right. So what we say, what company does, 
I don't remember their name right now. They create simple platforms. But what you do is instead of getting a fully built custom website for now, Right, you, do, you get this. And this Joomla, uh, you probably get this Drupal. Yeah. This stuff can work. Actually, that's why your uh, HR site is probably rated one of the best in the country. Yeah, you know what? It, it's, it's sad that it we get so much agenda. It's ridiculous. We have full time people who only job this. So, okay. And then it's just another example. This is more of a uh, Blog looking website, but again, um, about us, download information, uh, their journal, blog, uh, their regular people you can contact us in the company. So, what they do, they actually provide the LinkedIn information, Twitter information for their employees so you can go and network with them. But this is what you want as a job seeker, and this is what you want to do as a company. And uh, so there's community and more information about culture and different ways to contact the organization. So, so your question was, uh, can read the name. Misty. Misty. Your question was about recruitment, right? Mm -hmm. Does this answer it uh, somewhat, or do you, or is there something else that you were looking for? No, it's hidden on it. It's just, um, I guess, I was thinking more of the different ways to use the social media mm -hmm. through recruitment. Well, different ways. So, um, one is a corporate blog. And um, now I think it almost becomes natural for organizations to start blogs. The only problem is that too many of them treat it as just a marketing tool. So the blog does not give you real insights of the organization. It becomes a uh, um, blog that pretty much promotes the company and it's just kind of an ad. And that's, I think, mistreating the blog. But what you can do is, uh, so that instead of having one corporate blog that is being written by one person, you allow different people inside the organization to post information on one of the different topics that they want. Um, it's kind of uh, another example, but there was a non organization, and uh, what they did, they wanted to do uh, crowdsourcing, and one of their employees was traveling to Sudan uh, to do some uh, research and understand the problem with Darfur, and obviously he had a blog and he had all this information, but he wanted to go deeper. So what they did, uh, they took out uh, 15 cameras, uh, the one cheap ones, and they gave out those cameras to people in Sudan, just to everyone who wants it. And they asked them, now go, and within the next uh, couple of days, take pictures. And those pictures were actually shown now all. So the same kinds of applies to employees. Go and uh, write, go and uh, take pictures again. There needs to be some kind of screening involved. Uh, you need to make sure that uh, the contents well, of course, it's not uh, liability that it um, only says positive information about your organization. Certainly, they need to be checks and balances. But the idea is the same of social media using different tools, but instead of just one person inside your company to give it to employees inside your organization and tell them that the topics that you really want to showcase is the recruitment, is the information about your organization. Tell us why you like working here. I mean, we didn't necessarily know, obviously. It can be a good salary, but it can be just because we do free bagels in the morning. Or it can be because we have free water pool. Whatever it is, you never can guess. Just like market research, you never can guess what the customers like about you. Just in the same way, you cannot guess what employees like about working for your organization. So go there and ask. And the same site it provides you different analytics for the site like each. For the HR website, basically, uh, information, traffic sources, daily actions, uh, uh, your content, where the people actually come from to your website, question searches online for different jobs and how to they land on your HR website. So you treat it just like a whole separate entity. Because when you have a regular one, you probably sign up with Google Analytics, Web Trends, or any other little tool, the same goes here. Now, we can go back a little bit for components of personal brand. Because if you're a person you're looking for a job, you need to do something. You need to establish yourself in mind. And the organization also needs to do the same components. So again, it's vision and purpose that you're trying to achieve. Your values, your passions, top goals, core strengths and skills, feedback from others on LinkedIn, it's very easy, it's testimonials. But now organizations more and more, they also have testimonials. Testimonials from their employees. Testimonials from people who uh, worked at their organization for some time, but they left. 
Because just because if you left the organization because somebody offered you a bad, a bad position, it doesn't mean that you did not enjoy working for that company. You still could have enjoyed working for that organization. Yes? No, no. And those are different social media tools that you can use to promote your goods inside the organization or to promote your job search. On my blog or website, um, Twitter should hire probably everybody in this room knows the site, right? Twitter should hire was started by a woman who wants the job at Twitter, so she started blogging about it. And I think later she got a job at another organization that was actually better. Not better than Twitter, but actually better than what the type of job that she was able to get at Twitter. I have to be very careful about what I say because they can. Yeah. So this is network profile. Right again, LinkedIn, uh, all the Fortune 500 companies have uh, profiles on LinkedIn. So if you're job uh, seeking, you cannot afford not to. Social network profile. If you're a job seeker, social network profile for you. If you're a company, why not promote the social profiles of your employees? Twitter profile. Video presence. Again, if uh, your employees get to bought for you, why not uh, allow employees to shoot videos? Uh, let them uh, do a two, three minute video while I'm working. What's the name of the organization? Or while I'm working at four, three minutes. And then create, perhaps, out of all those videos, create a response. So we created the 15 uh, we collected 15 videos of people and why they like working at four. And now we give it the final video that sort of mixes everything together. And now you know what our employees find so valuable about our organization. Personal presentation, company presentation, you know those PowerPoint presentations that people do about themselves? Companies start to do the same thing. They start to do PowerPoints, they start to do presentations about what work for them, and they start to embed them in different parts as promotion. Social media resume and routine resume. And I will showcase those two. LinkedIn will just skip. I assume everybody knows different topics for LinkedIn and different devices. Um, Facebook, uh, this is actually very, very popular. We've tried this just as a test and I have Facebook and uh, we got emails from different companies asking, you know, can you give me more information? Uh, the important part about your advertising is your landing page, right? So when somebody clicks on it, where did they land? They need to land perhaps on your blog, on your LinkedIn profile, on your website. I would recommend that having those three landing pages. If you do not have a proper landing page, do not do any kind of advertising. That goes for the company as well. How many have no social media resumes? So this is social media resume created by a brand person. Uh, he gets all the credit for this. Uh, but he just uh, decided to evaluate what it has. So it has a lot of information about him, it has, it has posts. Um, additionally, he showcases more information about who he is, other social media resumes. Uh, they do case studies. Employees post case studies about the works they have done for previous employers. So ways to reach you, show your work history, uh, your work knowledge, your volunteering experience, your personal information. And again, it's simply because there is a since it's a web page, there is no limit to how much information you can share. And additionally, you can have a download page where the companies can download your resume in Word or in PDF, whatever is convenient. And then you can set this up actually for free with your blog. Now we start to see that actually more recruiters do the same type of thing. If you are a third party recruiter, uh, they start to do social media resumes for themselves to showcase what they're able to do for different job applicants. And this is a slide shared. Um, I'm sure how many people have seen this. Uh, uh, so people do presentations about who they are and pretty much in 10 slides to tell you about your work history. Uh, different components of your online um, presence, whether you're a company or just a person. Uh, it has to be usable, it has to be valuable, it has to be easily findable, very credible, don't lie because they will find out. It has to be accessible and it has to be desirable. So, again, a lot of job seekers, uh, when they spam 
different companies is their resumes, they're not credible. Uh, their resume is not valuable because they're very generic. You have to be very generic to send the same resume to 100 companies. Uh, they start becoming desirable because they cannot show. And uh, it's not very useful. The same goes for company HR websites. Some of them are very hard to navigate. Uh, especially for small companies, if they're not findable, just like you said, it's very hard to find a good company to work for because there is not a lot of information about their function. They do not treat that information as a marketing material. So, um, again, some research from the market, I don't have to show it now. The reason that US human resources professionals hire the job candidates after viewing their social network profiles. 50% said that it would feel for the candidate's personality. Would see fit within the company culture. Again, it's about your personality, it's about are you likable or not. And that was not this. So, why they decided not to hire people? Uh, because job candidate posted provocative and inappropriate photographs of information. Job candidate posted information about the drinking, using drugs. Job candidate uh, bad moms that we do something that we've heard about this for a long time. So, market research. When they are looking for a company to work for, or you are a company and you're looking for different degrees, you need to do some kind of market research. You need to understand uh, where those people are. So this model is developed for actually job seekers. You need to understand what your Google needs. Uh, you need to understand various business constraints, what they're able to give you, what they're not able to give you. And you need to understand technical requirements. And if you obviously know those constraints, it's easier for you to land here. The same goes with the company. If you're able to understand, if you let's say if you're going out for a program, so markets, if you understand what they want, if you understand the what they require out of you as an employer, it's easier for you to attract them. A um, couple of tools um, you probably know about all of them on Google Blog Search, especially if you're trying to find more information about the organization. But then job seekers search for blogs because blogging hopefully gives you more information, more in depth information about that company. A uh, link hopper is a great tool to search for different job openings. It's more traditional um, way, but it still shows a lot of uh, job postings out there, and it's tend to monster character and a uh, whole range of other sites. Uh, Google Custom Search, this is, I find this very important for companies. Uh, this is just the ability to create your own uh, search, uh, and it only searches for the sites that you want to. So you select 15, 20, 30 different sites that you want Google to search for, and it only searches those sites for the information. Um, monitoring conversations, uh, and this is, uh, goes along with uh, brand monitor. What you need to do to monitor your brand? If you treat your HR as your brand, you need to understand what people are saying about your culture and about working for your organization. If somebody who is not perhaps working for you says that I've heard that working for this company is a bitch and uh, I would not recommend anybody to do so, you cannot really sue them because it's an opinion. But you can ask them, well, you know, can you share more information? Uh, what can you do to make sure that this information, that you, you don't necessarily take it off, but you want to address those concerns. Um, just find a lot of blogs if you. Uh, this is a good way, local blogs are a great way to promote your organization, especially if you're uh, looking for people in, let's say, just this group, blog for bloggers, and ask them not necessarily to advertise you, but ask them, can you create a guest post on your blog about your organization, about our culture? Because uh, all the bloggers know that uh, people are currently looking for jobs, a lot of people, 10% of the population are looking for jobs. So if they can help their readers, giving them powerful information, they can certainly benefit from that. Um, Twitter search, uh, again, to search uh, for information inside the company, if you want to find people who want to work for that company, um, those are different uh, tools so that can help you monitor. Uh, conducting people search. 
identify the type of companies that you would like to work for. On the other hand, identify five or ten different job seekers or how they look that you want to approach. You need to clearly understand what type of person you would want to you want them for that job. Unless you're able to give them kind of, some kind of description, it will be very hard for you to find. Your search engines will track employees that definitely work uh, at your competition. Not a lot of companies actually do, but what you can is understand why employees are happy at working at your competition, working for your competition. That's a great insight because another foundation, maybe another company gives them better perks or gives them uh, something that you do not do. That information can be very usable and can then with people directly. Um, you're almost out of time. You have another, I don't know, how many slides of 10, 15. Let me maybe pause. Let me uh, answer maybe more questions instead of just going on. Uh, basically, the information goes back to the model. And I can. So basically, what we do in the rest of the presentation, we go through each step and we describe how social media can help the engage in conversations, uh, establish connections, and sort of that's the daily process. Yes. Well, let's say we did a quick case study. Let's say I'm looking for someone who's very tech savvy to work for my internet marketing business. What What do you think would be the most effective way to do that? Well, first of all, you need to understand what type of person are you looking for. Right. What type of credentials do they have? What type of job experience? Do they have a um, first probably go on LinkedIn and see people with similar profiles or that have certain kind of description? See what organization they belong to. If all of them belong to a certain group on LinkedIn, perhaps you need to join that group. If all of them are uh, some kind of community or need, you need to join that community. You need to start understanding what they are talking about. Um, quite often they'll say, you know, I'm looking for a job in such and such. I want to work for a company that understands what I'm able to accomplish. Then, uh, once you're able to see, let's say, 20 or 30 people inside that group, and you say, okay, five of them will actually be a good fit, start doing research for them. Understand, okay, that person uses LinkedIn, that person uses Twitter, that person uses uh, those various tools. That person has a website. Now, if you, that person spends 80% of their time on blog, I need to contact them via their blog. Start by commenting on their post. Start maybe sending them information, you know, I really like your blog, I really like what you're saying there, you know, let's develop some kind of connection. What type of job are you looking for? Because I help, I pair companies with the right people. So you start to engage in conversation with those people. And inside the conversation, you start to understand what they actually want. Out of, let's say, 10 people, only two will be looking for a job, um, eight of them will not be looking for a job, or will want to do some kind of project. So those people, after you engage with them in conversation, you start actually pitching their job, your job to them. And hopefully, those are the steps that you can take. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions, comments, uh, concerns? All right. Well, I think uh, this is pretty much it. Uh, this is also pretty much it for podcast event. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I'll sort of let you know. And, uh,